710 Keo, Mike and McCarty on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline this morning. Uh, Shreveport, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana Attorney General Jeff Landry. Uh, I'm demoting you, <laughs> Jeff. Sorry about that. No, <laughs> I am the Attorney General for Shreveport. Well, that's true. I guess technically <laughs> that's correct. Uh, there's a new bill, uh, Truth and Transparency in Louisiana's Criminal Justice System. Uh, explain to uh, the folks listening what this is. Well, look, first of all, I was hoping that this morning we would be reporting to everyone uh, listening out there that this bill passed uh, the House yesterday. But, you know, it, it it just amazes me the games that they play in Baton Rouge. Uh, and we wonder why Louisiana <clears throat> continues to have statistics that are really <clears throat> at the bottom of the barrel but this piece of legislation yeah the vote has been moved to tomorrow is that correct yeah that's what they say um you know but again i just you know i it just all kind of games that they play and it's ridiculous because this legislation has bipartisan support it came out of the committee with bipartisan support we had victims from around the state many of whom were from the shreveport area like shannon reese uh, Anita Williams, uh, Wendy Benjamin, Michelle Anglin, <clears throat> who lost her daughter by that stray bullet, um, Sharon Brown, Cortez Collins. I mean, the list goes on and on, the people that are supporting this legislation just from the Shreveport area. And all this is is making the records, the criminal records of both adults and juveniles con- uh, that are charged with certain violent offenses open to the public. I mean, just think about that. And then in the Caddo, East Baton Rouge, and Orleans area, those records uh, will be available electronically to the Department of Justice so that we can start to glean from those from that data. And then it's not all the records. It's not opening up the entire juvenile's records. It's just certain things uh, inside of the record that people want to know so that they can track. So people could go online and and look up these these records. Yeah. And and again, it's not the entire record. It's not the entire file. It's not very um, sensitive information on the case. What it is is it's the case, the docket, the judge the charge, the hearings, the bond, things that we and the public certainly have a right to know so we can determine whether or not those that are charged with dispensing justice in the state are doing their job. Jeff, let me ask you, these records, and maybe I'm wrong about this, these records are accessible now, but you have to jump through a few hurdles. You're trying to make that simpler. Is that where I'm, is that where this is going? And, and also no charge. Yeah, free. That That's the other thing, too. Look, it, in parishes where the information is electronically available, it could cost a member of the public, a victim, almost $27,000 a year to simply access and view those records online. Whoa. Now, look. We've got some great clerks around this state. We really do. Now, the Clerks Association, for whatever reason, believes that the public has to pay for that information. Now, this is in criminal court, okay? And and it has the support. We've worked with Doug Wellborn uh, in East Baton Rouge, a fine clerk of court. He understands exactly what this is. And so this is the only way that we can take the first step in taking back our criminal justice system so that it works for the victims and the citizens of the state. And this bill only would be put this in place in Caddo, Orleans, and East Baton Rouge. It's kind of a step. Just put your toe in the water for now, right? That's correct. It would it, On the electronic side, it would only take effect in East Baton Rouge, in Caddo, in Orleans. Now, it would be sweeping across the state <clears throat> dealing with the juvenile record so that you could walk into the courthouse, okay, and ask for this information. 
and they would have to make it available for you. Which, by the way, though, it, it, when juveniles are charged with violent offenses, the hearings are open to the public. So we're not, this is not some sort of lifting some sort of veil. We're just making it readily available to the public. So again, we can hold the judges, the DAs accountable when they're not doing their job. This would be, some clerks would say this will cost them money because right now they do make money on these records. Um, how would we replace that revenue for our clerks of court? Well, again, here's the question. Are those re- sh- should are those records not public? And the w- the problem is, is those clerks that are saying that are treating the criminal docket the same as the civil docket. These are criminal charges. Okay? Mm-hmm. Those clerks should be more than happy to grab because remember those clerks work for those people the people in those parishes. The people in the parishes are their constituents. And when we're talking about the criminal Im- information on people who are charged with crime, the public certainly should have the ability to go in there and grant that particular access. Let me tell you this, not holding those people accountable in our criminal justice system like what's going on right now is costing parishes and the states millions of dollars. There was a there was an article that came out that just in Orleans, crime right now is costing every citizen an additional $7,200. In Shreveport, it's costing every citizen additional an additional $5,100 a year. So the so the question I pose back to them is, what is the price that we? It, it, so what you're telling is there is a price, and if if that price is too high, then we don't have the ability to hold our criminal justice system accountable. And so, again, this is like a no brainer. This this is what the most. It, it, it just is so disappointing to me. It's what frustrates people. Uh, from around the state with Baton Rouge and the legislature. They go down there. They play these games. This is simple. This thing should have gone through the floor yesterday. It had bipartisan support in the committee. There needs to be no amendments tacked to it. We have the ability to access this information. The amount of money that it is going to cost these clerks is de minimis. It is absolutely de minimis. And, And we have told the clerks that, look, If there seems to be some overbearing cost as we start to implement this legislation, we'll go back and adjust that. But the public has a right to know the information on the people that are affecting their communities. I mean, right now, Louisiana has three cities in the top 10 most dangerous cities in the whole country. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of them is right there where y'all are in that Shreveport. I mean, so how do we get a hold of crime if the public is walking around in the dark without a flashlight? Well, and, and there, there a, doesn't seem to be a downside to law-abiding citizens for this, so good luck with uh, with the bill, and uh, keep us posted, if you will. Well, we're hopeful. We look, people who are interested, people who are listening right now, we urge them to call their legislature, those the representatives in the House, and urge them for quick and easy passage of this bill with no amendments on it. Um, We will continue to work uh, with the clerks around this state, but we collectively as citizens have to do something to get a hold of our criminal justice system so we can make our community safe. Attorney General Jeff Landry, sir, we appreciate your time. Good luck to you.